Psalm of the Shepherd. And I know you have had this preached. I know I've preached it several different times, and each time I try to bring it to you a new way while staying with the intent and the uh, purpose of the scripture. So I know this is very familiar to all of us. So back with this evening in just a few minutes, and I hope that this is something that will help you along the way because God has blessed us once again to see the beginning of another week. And somewhere in the week, we're going to need something, amen, to help us to get or to maintain at least who we are as Christians. We're going to have difficulties. It goes without saying we're going to have trials and tribulations, as we say. So we always want to have just a little something extra uh, for those encounters that come our way. And I want you to encourage us this evening. By looking at Psalm 23, beginning at verse number one, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup run over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't know how many of you remember when Brother Miller was up here doing our meeting this past year, and he used an illustration about how we can overcome difficult times. Brother Miller, very, very animated in his preaching sometimes. And he's big on illustrations, and, and he likes to call members of the audience, amen, to help him to make his illustration. And one of the things that I'm reminded of here is I look at this text here. In verse number six, where he says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my, of my life. And he and he and he walked down the middle of the aisle and he called a couple of brothers to walk with him. Yeah. And he said, I'm gonna be okay no matter what I'm dealing with, as long as I got goodness, amen. Right. And he had other brothers representing mercy. He said, as long as I walk with them, as long as they just, just follow behind me, I'm gonna be okay. And when you look at this psalm, one of the shortest and one of the also most powerful psalms that the psalmist wrote, the psalm of the shepherd. We understand uh, a shepherd, what their purpose, what their intent was to watch over the flock, to feed and nurture the flock, to protect the flock, to be even prepared to give one's life for the flock. So we understand the importance and the significance attached to the shepherd. And David called on his experience as a young shepherd boy. That was his uh, profession part, his growing up, his, his labor involved being a shepherd. So he was very in tune with what it meant to be a shepherd. And I believe that had a lot to do with David being able to write such a beautiful, poetic uh, story telling about God and his son from his experience as a shepherd. I want to share something with you this evening and then I'm going to take a seat. There's a story that was told of a Shakespeare actor who was known everywhere for his one-man shows of reading and recitations from the classics. And every time before he would sit down after his nightly performance, he would always end his performance with a reading of Psalm 23. So the story goes that each night, without exception, as the actor began his recitation, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It would draw the crowd in as he would begin to recite this. 
The crowd would listen attentively. And then at the conclusion of the song, they would rise in thunderous applause and appreciation of the actor's incredible ability to bring the verse to life. But one night, just before the actor was to offer his customary recital of Psalm 23, a young man, could have been a young Eddie Ty, could have been a young Dwayne Thompson from the audience, spoke up. Could have been a young Thomas Wilson and said, Sir, do you mind if tonight I recite Psalm 23? The story goes on to say the actor was quite taken aback by this unusual request. But he allowed the young man to come forward and stand front and sit on the stage to recite the song, knowing that the ability of this unskilled youth would be no match for his own talent. With a soft voice, the young man began to recite the words of the song. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When he was finished, there was no applause. There was no standing ovation as on other nights. All that could be heard was the sound of weeping. The audience had been so moved by the young man's recitation that every hour was full of tears. Amazed by what he had heard, the actor said to the youth, I don't understand. I have been performing Psalm 23 for years. I have a lifetime of experience and training, but I have never been able to move an audience as you have tonight. Tell me, what is your secret? The young man quietly replied, well, sir, you know the song, but I know the shepherd. That's by an unknown author. I wish I could take credit for that. You don't mind if I take credit for that? I read it so well. I don't take credit for that. I like that. When I saw that, I said, I got to show this. It's yours today. It's mine today. It's all ours. It's ours today. The young man quietly replied, well, sir, you know the song. Think about that. Man, they hit me like a punch. All the times I, 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 I read the song and I've heard it read in so many different settings. Many times we hear read at funeral settings and I listen to it, but this was like a punch to me. It was like, wow, you know the song. I know the shepherd. That's a big difference. As I close here tonight, there's a big difference in really quoting the song Amen. and knowing the shepherd. Amen. There's a big difference in quoting the song and knowing the shepherd. In John chapter 10, verse 14, as I close here, John chapter 10, verse 14, John says it this way. In John 10, 14, as soon as I turn it, John 10, 14 says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. And then he says what? And, and I'm known of mine. Jesus says, I know my sheep. But he said, also, I am known of my sheep. That's us, y'all. That's right. That's right. It's, not just, it's not just that we know the song. But we know the subject of the song, Paul. We know the shepherd. Y'all don't overfed Paul again over there. <laughs> Y'all have to stop overfeeding Paul. It's a limit. You have to cut him off. Paul, get relaxed. I'm almost through, Paul. Hang with me, brother. Hang with me. 
He says, I am the good shepherd and know my, think about that, y'all. Jesus says, I know my sheep and I am known of mine. Don't you think that's important? Amen. To me, that's important to know that not only does uh, I know him, but he knows me. Uh -huh. I know the shepherd. In 1 John 2, I told y'all it was going to be long, right? Y'all remember that? 1 John 2, verse number 1. 1 John 2, verse number 1. My little children, John says, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And here's the perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. I don't know Jesus. But I ain't doing them real good at keeping your commandments in. If you know him, you keep his commandments. He that said, I know him, and keep it not his commandments. Uh oh. Uh oh. He just said, I know him, and keep it not his commandments, is a. Y'all said it. And the truth is what? Not in him. But who shall keep his word in him? Verily is the love of God perfected. The love of God perfected is, Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, even so I love you. That you love one another. If you ever had a question or concern about God's love being perfected, that's it, y'all. That perfect, that complete, that's like a circle. The Father loves the Son. The Son loves us. We ought to love one another. That's a complete circle. He said, Whoso keep his word in him fairly is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that says he abides in him. Uh, all, himself also to, to walk even as he walked. So if we love him, we ought to walk as him. If we know him, we ought to love him. If we love him, then it's evident that we know him. First mm -hmm. John 4.8. First John 4.8 says this, and I'm about to say that, y'all. First John, let me start verse 7. First John 4.7. Beloved, because see, I want us to understand that though somebody else may know the son, we know the shepherd. Mm -hmm. Beloved, 1 John uh, 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 4 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and know of God. He that loveth not, know of not God. For God is Love. Amen. Herein is love, verse 10. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the perpetuation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also to love one another. Amen. When we love one another, that shows that we love God. And that shows that we know God. And I watch John 17. John 17, as I close here, and as, and as you're turning there, I want you to keep in mind this question. Do you know him? First on, based, based on 1 John 4, 8, the question is, do you know him? And it's one thing to know the psalm, but it's necessary that you know the shepherd. Do you know him? John 17, how important is it that we know Jesus? In John 17, verse number 1 says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life. Listen to this. To as many as thou hast given him, and this is eternal life. Say it with me, that they might what? No. Know thee, the only true God, and who else? And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You ought to know him. <coughs> you ought to know him. Do you know him? Amen. It's one thing to be able to recite the psalm from memory, to quote it. That's one thing. And if you can do that out of 
departure. But it's more important that you know who the shepherd. Amen. You got to know the shepherd. And if you know the shepherd, then you got to love the shepherd. And if you love the shepherd, then you're going to love those that he created. Amen. Amen. And God's love is perfected. Do you know the shepherd? Do you know the shepherd? Think about this this week as you travel along. And times are going to get difficult. They always do. We have difficulties. We have times where we just so not have to deal with it. But man, let this help you to keep going. This thought, this idea that you know the shepherd. You know the shepherd. The son of the shepherd. This lesson is yours this evening. If you're here tonight, I pray that you know God. I'm talking about having a relationship with him. Not that you just know him, but you are known of him. Not that just he know you, but you know him. That's a relationship. You see, there's a lot of people that I know of, but I don't know them. Think about it. There are some people that know of me, but they don't know me. And that's okay. I'm fine with that, Clyde. I can deal with that. That there are people who don't know me. And I can deal with the fact that there are people that I don't know. I know of them, and they may know of me. I'm fine with that. But when it comes to God, I got to know him. And I'm so thankful that he knows me. Because that establishes our relationship. Do you know him? I don't know about you this evening, but I'm glad I know him, Brother Gibson. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I know him. If you're here tonight, you're not a child of God, you become a child of God, I want you to get to know him. I want you to get to know my Lord. I want you to get to know my Father, my God, my Creator, my Redeemer. I want you to get to know him tonight. Amen. If you have not been baptized in water for the mission of your sins, I'm sorry, but you, you don't know him. That's right. You're in a dangerous place. It's important that you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, recognizing that he died on the cross, was buried, and rose again the third day. When you hear that story, be willing to believe it. Have a change of heart. Have a change of mind. Be willing to confess he is the Son of God. Have all of your sins washed away. Be added to the church of Christ. And be faithful unto death, he says. And I give you a crown like Jesus says, I am known of my sheep, and they know me. Do you know him tonight? If you are one of his, and you know him, let me help you understand this. Sometimes we do things that we ought not to do. Sometimes we, we go beyond the bounds that God has set for us. But God is not lost. <laughs> The same blood that cleaned you up when you went to that water grave baptism, that same blood has the power to clean you back up. Amen. 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 It's got the power to take those little spots and wrinkles out. Amen. That's right. So if you need prayer for yourself or someone else, or you need to get back in that right relationship with God, I want you to take the opportunity to do that right now as we stand singing songs in church. I'm glad I know you.